Well, I was a student at UCLA at the time, and I was working in the group at UCLA that was developing our end of the hardware and software interface to make this work. And I was the one who was writing the programs on our computer to talk to the ARPANET. Well, I was the architect and the implementer of the uh, software on the SCS 940 at uh, SRI uh, that uh, basically you know, was connecting to the uh, Sigma 7 at UCLA. It was on a terminal like this that I actually attempted to connect to the computer at SRI. I was typing on a teletype similar to this one. Uh, late October, on October 29th, we actually tried to communicate doing that. The first couple of times it didn't work, and then we found the problems, and later on it did. So I typed an L, and I wanted, which my system received, formatted into a packet, sent it to the imp, got sent to Bill's machine, where, to the imp there, which sent it to Bill's machine, where he took it. And I guess Bill had some monitoring software on another terminal, or you could see what I was typing. I, could, I was looking straight into memory, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah. And so I typed the L, and, and he said he got the L, and his system took it, sent it back to me to print on my terminal, and I, my terminal printed the L. And I said, great, I got the L back, and I typed the O, and same thing. And then I typed the G, and he said, wait a minute, my system crashed. I had to rebuild the operating system, change the buffer size, rebuild the operating system, and then reboot it. And fortunately, you know, it was... I mean, it didn't take a long time. It was probably 10 or 15 minutes, I would guess. Yeah, it, was, it, it seemed to me that the time from when we, when he told me it had crashed and he was going to have to think about it for a second and fix it to the time we tried again was about a half hour. We, yeah, we got it working at 10.30, or at least that's when I logged yeah. that it, it had yeah. worked. So it was probably 9 or 9.30 when we tried. This is uh, an IMP, which stands for an Interface Message Processor, which were built to be the first switches for switching packets around the ARPANET. It was built by a company called Bolt, Boranek, and Newman, well known as BBN. Yeah, when it was programmed, basically, if, if you got to a point where uh, you weren't sure what was happening, you could stop the computer, and then using switches, you could either change values in memory, or you could single step it through the, uh, through the instructions, and you could see the status of various, various uh, registers and parts of memory. These particular cabinets are insulated and shielded. The light bulbs were special so that they, to meet the military specs, they were radio frequency interference protected. <laughs> and we had one of these at UCLA beginning of September 69 and then October 69 built. In the beginning of October, I think we got one at, uh, at SRI. Now at SRI, it was a little different. I had to do some actual programming of the IMP in order to interface it to the, uh, to the host computer there. So I got to use all of these little switches and actually uh, go through and, and uh, work at this level to make programs work. It was, it was a sort of, I mean, everything was written in assembly language, in assembly language and it was a, a different kind of programming than we have today. This is the inside of a typical ruggedized computer of its day. Inside here we have power, distribution, fans, and cabinets that contain the electronics. The uh, things that's interesting about this is the size of the power supply. You know, these computers of 40 years ago took a huge amount of power. Well, when it worked, to me it mean, oh, neat, we got it working. But that was the same kind of a, uh, a feeling I would get when I got any program working. I didn't recognize it as anything unique or uh, momentous. I didn't go out and celebrate. It was just, um, oh, I gotta, we got this working, that's nice. You know, the bigger picture is that getting the network running was not a goal in and of itself. People look at, look at, the, at the early ARPANET and see different things, and, and I think the, the two things that, that I saw were one of them, the ability to basically break the language barrier, if you will. In other words, have two really dissimilar computers talking to one another. That was huge, uh, because until then, if you, you know, you'd say, well, my file's in ASCII, and somebody else would say, well, our machine is EBSIDIC, and you'd go, you know, bummer. <laughs> you know, they they would never get translated, and there were there were really some barriers that just couldn't couldn't be crossed. Uh, and you know, I thought the the idea of being able to basically cross that barrier uh, so you could have different machines talking to each other was huge. Uh, the other uh, the other thing that and th this sounds sort of silly, but the other thing that that was huge was the speed. You know, 50 kilobytes at that time was. Cool. Enormous. I mean, that was, uh, you know, beyond our wildest dreams. And there were people beginning to think about, well, what, what else can we do with this? Um, and how can we do file transfer and other such things? And then sometime in the next year, 
when the first versions of NCP protocol were being implemented, where now you could actually uh, begin to create a standard Telnet protocol, a standard mm -hmm. other protocol, so that you only had to write to that standard. Um, and I don't remember, I'd have to go back and look at notes as to when those things happened, but that's when I would say we began to actually have a deployment of a network. You know, I, I think in terms of a, uh, just a proof of concept, I mean, you know, when the October 29th, I mean, that was really when, you know, you sort of had the, the whole picture from one end to the other where you could have a computer here, you had protocols that were, you know, in place so that it could talk to the computer there, and then bringing other, other computers, hosts onto the network, or the computers on the network was basically replicating those and improving those protocols. Uh, so in some sense, you know, I, would, I wouldn't call it point one, I'd probably call it network point oh one. <laughs> yeah.